Well, it's time to get little George going under saddle because now he is officially three. And I've also, since he's had a month off, I've also been kind of beefing him up by feeding him quite a bit more protein to see if I can get a little more muscle along his top line and his hindquarters and widen him out a little bit in the front end. And it has worked because he's he is thicker, he is wider than he was, and part of how you can tell is that breast collar is actually not quite as loose as it was before. So he is ready, he's mentally ready, um, he knows groundwork real well. So now I'm trying to push him to the next level a little bit. The reason that I put him on a lunge line in the round pin instead of just free lunging him is because a lot of times people just focus on free lunging and don't actually ask the horse to really stay slow, stay relaxed, and stay with them. At this point, after he's walk trotted and loped both directions and uh, I'm comfortable with kind of how his mindset is, I'm going to push him a little more by tying this head around. And this isn't the first time he's done this, but it is going to be the first time that I've really tried to sack him out quite a bit while he's tied around. So he knows how to give, but what I'm trying to do is get him to learn how to handle his his either fear, nervousness, uncertainty, frustration, any of that in a constructive way by giving instead of reacting. So this is kind of tackling the fight or flight response too. The other thing that's nice here is I am able to use this sack on a whip to kind of mess with the side that he can't see. So since I'm, if I'm going to be up on him, he's not going to be able to see both of my sides or both of his sides at the same time so he's going to feel my legs on both sides of him and he's only going to be able to see one or even if his head's, head is straight he may not be able to see either one so I want him to be able to handle feeling things that he can't see Now the fun starts. I'm checking his cinch, making sure that's good and tight, because he's still pretty round. He doesn't have the highest withers, so this saddle is not going to be the easiest to uh, stay centered. But what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm just making some noise with the stirrup leathers. I'm not actually hurting him. I'm just checking his reaction. I'm making sure that he's used to that saddle. Actually making noises like it's getting used, because once I get up in it, who knows what sounds the saddle's going to make. It'll probably squeak and slap and do some weird stuff. So I want to make sure he is completely prepared for anything that he can experience when I get up there. So before I put, in a, put a foot in the stirrup, I'm going to ask him to bend just like he was before. Because there's a couple of reasons. First of all, he's kind of learned that that position is, it means that he needs to stand still because he gets a release when he stands still and doesn't fight. The other reason is, is because if I did get on and he were to spook and take off, he can't really do a whole lot physically when he's standing like this. So it's, it's a safety deal and it's also a mental check for him. So what I'm doing is I'm not really thinking about getting on the horse. I'm just trying to get him used to all the movements associated with getting on the horse. So I put my foot in the stirrup, took my foot out of the stirrup, put my foot in the stirrup and put some weight in there, did some hopping up and down. And the whole time I'm, I'm watching his reaction. So if he can handle it, I go a little farther every time, If he's as long as he's comfortable. If he's not, I just kind of wait on him to settle down and then just see how he's doing. And if he moves around a little bit, that's fine. I just stay with him. So again, I'm hopping some. Uh, a lot of times what scares the horse isn't getting up into the saddle, it's the movement of getting up into the saddle. And then here also, this will get him used to me stepping down off of him, which I've had horses that were easy for me to get up on, and then when I get off, 
they get scared. So I'm trying to prevent that from the start here. That That's something that I ran into a long, long time ago when I was first starting Colts and I was a lot dumber about it. So now I want him to get used to me getting off and on before I fully commit to being in the saddle. So here I'm going to go for a little, go a little farther, try to pop up above him, see how he handles it. Um, and then I'm going to lean over the saddle so that I can rub the other side. If he were to spook or do anything right now, the fact that I don't have both legs over him yet means that I can sort of slide off in an emergency if I need to a lot more easily. So here I'm, I'm getting him used to my leg all over the place. Um, I want to do a lot more dramatic things than I would if I were just getting on normally because I want to make sure that, like I said earlier, he's mentally prepared for just about anything that could happen with me being in the saddle. Another thing that's important that a lot of people miss or when they're starting colts or they don't do is they, they don't really give them a break because when I got on him just now, you saw me actually, I did sit in that saddle on the other side, but I got immediately off and gave him a little mental break. And the reason for that is because I don't want him to feel like it's a trap. I don't want him to feel like once I'm on, I'm on, and um, he can't do anything about it. I want him to realize, no, this is something that, that does have an end. It's not something where uh, I'm Velcroing myself to you for uh, from here on out. It's not a massive commitment that he needs to be worried about. It's just something that's not a big deal. And when he starts to feel like it's not a big deal, then I can start riding him for longer and longer and eventually just be on him all day if I need to be. But for right now, I, since he's unsure about what the heck I'm doing, I don't want him to feel like he is totally stuck with me and I want to give him plenty of time to think because horses do need time to rest and think and to do that with the pressure completely off of them. So here he's showing that he does actually have a better side and a worse side. So mounting from his right side, he, he's a little more uncomfortable with. He's a little more uncomfortable with me rubbing my leg on him and leaning over on that side. So what I'm not going to try to do here, since he's a little worse on this side, is I'm not going to try to get all the way on just yet. I'm not really worried about having everything perfect. I just want to make on both sides I want to make little steps in the right direction and I want to finish on both sides at the best at the place that he allows me to finish comfortably so there I was just looking for a, a good place for him a good mental place for me to get off so what I mean is I was waiting for him to calm down and stand still so then I go to the other side where he's more comfortable and I'm gonna see how he does and if I can get all the way on with him being very comfortable and relaxed, then I'll do it. But since he did have a little rougher time on that other side, I'm going to give him a little longer break here before I actually do ask him to do anything else. It's hard to see in the video, but he actually feels very relaxed to me here, even though his head is a little bit up. He's not tense. His hind leg is cocked. Occasionally that can just mean they're, they're about ready to blow and they're uh, nervous, but the way that he felt is not that he was ready to blow. It was more um, he just didn't care what I was doing. He was totally comfortable. So I'm going to quit there, loosen his cinch as a reward, and let him go home for the night.